The success Ukraine has seen using old American Bradley infantry fighting vehicles against Russia shows what Ukraine can do when it is given enough of the weapons it needs, a warfare expert told Business Insider. It is noted that the US has given Ukraine more than 300 Bradleys, significantly more than some other armored combat vehicles such as Abrams tanks. The US has sent Ukraine only 31 of those. The Bradley's armor consists of spaced laminate armor designed to withstand anti-armor projectiles such as RPGs and 30mm armor-piercing ammunition. This armor is also effective against 155mm artillery shell fragments, thus providing solid protection around the vehicle. In terms of operational capabilities, the Bradley can reach a maximum speed of 56 km an hour and has a range of up to 400 km, allowing it to operate effectively over long distances. It is also equipped with nuclear, biological and chemical protection systems, thermal night vision and automatic fire extinguishing systems. The role of the Bradley on the battlefield, supported by its sophisticated targeting systems and durable design, has proven to be a crucial asset for Ukrainian forces as they navigate the complexities of the conflict in eastern Ukraine. Colonel Hamish de Breton Gordon, a former commander of the UK's Joint Chemical, Biological, Radiological and Nuclear Regiment, said that the available numbers had enabled Ukraine to use its Bradley far more effectively than the tanks. They've got a lot of them, Hamish said, and if they had a lot of Abrams and a lot of Challengers, they would use them differently. With the US provided Bradleys that Ukraine is using, because they've got a lot of them, they can afford to lose a few. De Breton Gordon said, adding, when you've only got 14 Challenger 2s, you can't really afford to lose many. So I think that is key. He said that it's a lesson for the West where a belief grew that fewer, very technical pieces of equipment would be better than a larger number of weaker pieces. We're now realizing that you sort of need a balance, he said. So when you look at the Bradleys, it's their mass and the way that they're used, which is why they're so successful, he said. In Ukraine, Bradleys have fought against infantry in bunkers, troop carriers, drones and even top tanks. He said he thought the Bradley legend is very, very good for the Ukrainians, adding, it stiffens the resolve of the Ukrainians and no doubt it's also added fear to the Russians. De Breton Gordon said that Ukraine had exploited the weaknesses in many Russian tanks. On these tanks, the places where the turret meets the hull are very vulnerable because there's virtually no armor there, he said. A possible Russian drone flyover last week prompted a NATO military base in western Germany to briefly raise its security level, media in the country reported, citing anonymous security sources. The western military bloc said it elevated and then lowered the security level at Geilenkirchen Air Base due to an unspecified potential threat. Germany, a key ally of Ukraine, has been on high alert for possible sabotage and attacks on military facilities in recent months. NATO has used Geilenkirchen since 1980 serving as a base for its AWACS reconnaissance aircraft. German news agency Deutsche Presse Genter, citing German security sources, reported that the security level at the air base was temporarily elevated over intelligence findings indicating potential Russian sabotage using a drone. However, Geilenkirchen spokesperson Christian Brett dismissed the notion of drone flyovers as absurd in a statement. Reuters cited a NATO spokesperson at Geilenkirchen who clarified that the word Russia was never mentioned. We discussed a threat caused by drones, the unnamed NATO spokesperson was quoted as saying. There have been no official statements regarding a specific Russian threat at the base. Moscow has repeatedly denied allegations of sabotage against Western nations supporting Ukraine's defense against Moscow's invasion. Earlier in April, investigators arrested two German-Russian men suspected of spying for Russia and plotting attacks in Germany, including on U.S. military facilities, in an attempt to undermine support for Ukraine. Fourteen Boeing E-3A airborne warning and control system aircraft are based at the Gelsenkirchen airfield. Last week, NATO raised the security level at the base due to a probable threat and sent its employees home as a precaution. 
Both at the airfield and at the NATO headquarters in Brussels, they opened the possibility of UAV flights.